Today, I want to review a different mask than I normally review. Well, different kind of mask. It's this, a powered air purifying respirator. It is a battery powered respirator that has a uh, blower here that sucks air through the filter and then blows it into the mask, creating positive pressure inside the mask, which means that air can't easily leak into the mask through the seal because the air is going out or would if it could. So theoretically, this should make the mask a lot more leak resistant and give you much better fit factors, even if the mask doesn't fit perfectly. But ironically, in the US, tight fitting respirators like this one that have uh, powered fans on them are tested in what they call negative pressure mode. That is, you leave the blower off, put the mask on like a normal respirator, and breathe through it and see what the fit factor is. So you don't really get to test how much better the, well, the blower is at making the mask safer, which is ironic. So I'm gonna test it both ways. I'm gonna test it the way that uh, it's tested in the US, where we test it like a regular negative pressure respirator. And then I'm gonna turn the blower on and test it with the blower on, which is something they do in Australia. And I don't know why they do it in Australia and we don't do it here, but I wanna see if there's a difference. Okay, uh, I'm wearing this respirator right now and you might notice that um, it's fogging up. And that's because this respirator does not have a nose cup. The nose cup keeps the air that you breathe out away from the lens compartment. It only goes out the uh, exhalation point. So this mask doesn't have a nose cup because, well, normally it's got a blower that blows fresh air in all the time and uh, your humid air gets washed out really fast, so it doesn't need the nose cup. But you can see one of the problems with testing this mask in negative pressure mode is that the mask is not configured to work well in negative pressure mode. But the good thing is, is that if your blower should fail and no longer bring in air, you're still going to be breathing filtered air through this mask. Now, I have it configured with these uh, negative pressure filters because that's the way this mask is tested in the U.S. at least. Okay, here we go. Recommendation. Respirator wearers should achieve equivalent or higher scores on speaking intelligibility tests. Okay. Okay, um, overall 1900, still a good score, but I gotta say that it's not as good as I was expecting from a full face respirator with these um, 7093 P100 cartridges. Um, I have gotten better fit scores out of this mask uh, in static fit tests. So I, I would have expected to get at least as good with this because this is kind of the gold standard. It should be interesting to see whether this blower actually does make a big difference because we're gonna put it on the exact same mask and uh, that should give us a change. But before we do that, to make sure that this is giving us enough air, first you have to test it with this airflow meter to make sure that you've got at least uh, four cubic uh, feet per minute uh, for a sealed respirator. So I'll go ahead and turn the blower. And uh, yeah, we have more than enough uh, airflow. But as the battery dies, that might go down a little bit. One of the disadvantages of this style of simple powered respirator is that it, it's a dumb system. It doesn't have an adaptive uh, system where it has a sensor that detects air pressure. It just turns on and blows as much as the battery allows it. And you have to hope that that's enough. But at least because this is tight fitting, this respirator means that even if the airflow is not uh, as high as it should be, you're still protected because you're still sealed in as much as you are with a normal respirator. So now we'll go ahead and attach this to the respirator. So I've got the blower on and I'm going to turn it on so that you can hear how it sounds when someone's talking nearby. So um, 
Yeah, you wouldn't want to do this um, in a library or something like that. So uh, about um, about 69, 70 decibels. Not ear splittingly loud, but not quiet either. And when I put it on, you probably won't be able to hear me talking through this at all, but I'm gonna try and find out. Okay, it's going, I don't know, can you hear me? Here's the microphone right down here. Uh, might not be the best spot for it. Let's try this. So I'm uh, holding the microphone out here to see if you can hear me talking. I don't think you're going to be able to hear me. It's kind of loud inside the mask. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not really hearing anything. Here we go. Five thousand nine hundred twenty. That is a great fit factor. Um, not quite as amazing as I was expecting. I thought we'd get ten thousand or something, and I thought there'd be like zero vari variability between the different exercises because of all that positive air pressure keeping any leaks from getting in. But amazingly, I guess some leaks do get in um, because we did have changes in the fit factor with the exercises that involved motion, which surprises me. Um, there are trade-offs. That was definitely noisy. I felt like I had just spent uh, an hour vacuuming the house. Um, so that is an issue. And also my neck, it's not sore, but I can feel that I've been working it a bit more. Um, this uh, blower here, uh, see, according to my notes, is uh, 338 grams, so a third of a kilo, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's at the end of this. So you've got a lever here and it's um, torquing your head down. Um, Fortunately, the, this heavy battery that weighs nearly a kilo is not um, on the end of that. But I did feel that, and it also added more inertia. So whenever you move your head, uh, you know, a body that's at rest does not want to move, so it lags behind and does create more flexibility in the seal. I could feel the cup underneath my chin slipping when I went up and down a bit. So overall, this definitely does work better than the uh, other filters. Not amazingly so, but you did see less variability um, in the motion exercises. So uh, overall, it's an interesting tool to have. Uh, it does have limitations, but if you want to feel safe in an environment where you really don't want your mask to slip, having that positive air pressure can make a significant difference and you don't have to worry about the mask seal slipping as much.